Let's stand to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, pray that you would be with us today. You would guide our thoughts. Help us to follow you, draw closer to you, and to all your children. I pray that you'll be with all those that are suffering today and all the all the sorrow that goes on in the world. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, for those of you that have Sirach in your Bible, um, I want to read chapter 7. I was encouraged uh, by it this last week and challenged by it. Um, might make some comments on it, but uh, Sirach chapter 7. Do no evil, and evil will never overtake you. Stay away from wrong, and it will turn away from you. Do not sow in the furrows of injustice, and you will not reap a sevenfold crop. I was thinking about that verse, the first verse, it says, Do no evil, and evil will not evil will not evil will never overtake you. Stay stay away from wrong and it will not turn. And it will turn away from you. Um, just how how we are called to resist, resist sin, resist um, wickedness. Um, I also listened to a story this week that. Um, that I thought about this, that I thought about this morning then, last night, um, there was, I don't know how many of you, how many of you know this story, but about a hundred, a little over a hundred years ago, when uh, a British railroad company was building a railroad through Africa, through Central Africa, there was, they came to a place, the, 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 the contractor that went out to help. Uh, about the time that he, he went to help at that part of the railroad, um, two men eating lions started uh, pouncing in on people when they were sleeping at night and uh, and would just carry carry the screaming victim away because all the all the shelter that the men had were were tents and they were just camped out and there was there was these two big maneless lions that would uh, would come and attack them each night, and and they tried to shoot them, but they it was dark and they they didn't really. And whenever uh, they would set up for them, they would they would hear the the screams from the people in another camp where they attacked it, and they would they would they kept on invading the people that that were trying to sh to kill them, and. Uh, it was a, it's a pretty sad account. Um, I, it was pretty disturbing um, listening to it and I was just thinking of, of how that would be and I was thinking of it as I was laying in my bed just wondering how it would be if, uh, if you didn't know when that lion would pounce in on you and uh, I thought that's a pretty pretty sad place for a human to be or a, a pretty rough place for for humans uh, if, if you didn't know a lion would if a lion would pounce in on you just any moment and 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 it got so bad there at that railroad camp that a bunch of people just a bunch of the workers just
jumped on a train and left one day. Um, and uh, in the, I think it was six or eight months that before they killed these lions, uh, it had these two lions killed 140 men in the in the railroad camps, and so. Um, but as I was as I was thinking of the sorry fate of of these people, I I was just reminded of I think it's in in First Peter five. He says that our adversary, the devil, is is. Um, prowling around looking for people to devour and and I just couldn't help but think that that people are dying to to sin all the time around us but it doesn't affect us in the same way we don't feel sorry for it in the same way but people are still people's souls are destroyed in a in a worse way than these lions ever did to all these men, the way they carried them off in that in those camps, and so I um, that was a, a sobering thought for me to to remember um, to remember who who um, what lion we need to watch out for the one that wants our souls, and so just wanted to share that anyways I'll keep reading here in, in Sirach do not seek from the Lord high from the Lord high office or the seat of honor from the king do not assert your righteousness before the Lord or display your wisdom before the king do not seek to become a judge or you may be unable to root out injustice you may be partial to the power, powerful and so mar your integrity. Commit no offense against the public, and do not disgrace yourself among the people. Do not commit a sin twice, not even for one will you go unpunished. Do not say, he will consider the great number of my gifts, and when I make an offering to the Most High God, he will accept it. Do not grow weary when you pray. Do not neglect to give alms. Do not ridicule a person who is embittered in spirit, for there is one who humbles and exalts. Do not devise a lie against your brother, or do the same to a friend. Refuse to utter any lie, for it is a habit that results in no good. Do not babble in the assembly of the elders, and do not repeat yourself when you pray. Do not hate hard work, labor, or farm work which was created by the Most High. Do not enroll in the ranks of sinner. Remember that retribution does not delay. <coughs> Humble yourself to the utmost, for the punishment of the ungodly is fire and worms. Do not exchange a friend for money or a real brother for the gold of Ophir. Do not dismiss a wife and good wife for her charm is worth more than gold. Do not abuse slaves who work faithfully, who work faithfully, or hired laborers who devote themselves to their tasks. Let your soul love intelligent slaves. Do not withhold from them their freedom. Do you have cattle? Look after them. If they are profitable to you, keep them. Do you have children? Discipline them and make them obedient from their youth. Do you have daughters? Be concerned for their chastity. And do not show yourself too indulgent with them. Give a daughter in marriage and you complete a great task. But give her to a sensible man. Do you have a wife who pleases you? Do not divorce her, but do not trust yourself to one whom you detest. 
With all your heart, honor your father, and do not forget the birth pangs of your mother. Remember that it was of your parents you were born. How can you repay what they have given to you? With all your soul, fear the Lord and revere his priests. With all your might, love his maker, and do not neglect his ministers. Fear the Lord and honor the priests, and give him his portion as you have been commanded. The first fruits, the guilt offering, the gifts of the shoulders, the sacrifice of sanctification, and the first fruits of the holy things. Stretch out your hand to the poor, so that your blessing may be complete. Give graciously to all the living. Do not withhold kindness, even from the dead. Do not avoid those who weep, but mourn with those who mourn. Do not hesitate to visit the sick, because for such deeds you will be loved. In all you do, remember the end of your life, and then you will never sin. I think some of these verses in here are given to people from the Old Covenant, and uh, um, and we have a higher standard of a higher standard of of living now, but I think some of them, or some of them, like uh, verse thirty-two um, to thirty-five, would uh, Jesus talked about these same things? He talked about giving to the poor. Um, so that your blessing may be complete, says here. Um, and uh, do not avoid those who weep, but mourn with those who mourn. Jesus said, um, Blessed are those who mourn now, for they will be comforted. Um, and I really like that last verse. In all you do, remember the end of your life, and then you will never sin. Um, I think that's that's important when we're tempted to remember to remember that we will all die and give account to God and uh, helps us keep things in perspective yeah I would just like to say that I'm glad we're shared and I have at times been bothered about why we are sensitive in the natural things danger, just like a child getting on the road or any other dangers or like lions, but um, sin or disobedience or these sinful things just somehow don't penetrate as much or I'm not sure or doesn't hurt as much as like Harvey shared. We think of these poor people that the lions were just eating. But somehow, we, I don't know, I've, I've just been, I've often wondered about that. If it's not actually God's will that we'd have the same kind of feeling, or if, if we could have it, if we did the right thing, it's just something I've wondered about. Um, but... For sure, we need to get a hold of it in our personal life, for sure. And, I, and how it goes with the rest of the world. I, I guess in some ways, it's so vast, too, that how to incorporate every human being into my mind would also seem kind of impossible. So I guess it does have... But still, this just this feeling of how things happen in the natural. I don't know. That's just something I've wondered about. Just <clears throat> have a thought to add there to your question, Walter. Because um, I've wondered about the same thing too, but I... <clears throat> I don't think necessarily that uh, we're not supposed to have the same kind of feelings toward it. I, I think it has some to do with we just get so used to stuff. 
I have heard that people people who have lived in some of the uh, through some of the really gruesome wars uh, or like uh, lived through um, uh, Holocaust and, and or the ancient wars where seeming or at times where life seem cheap to people like the like in the Roman when the Romans killed people like people people got so used to seeing dead bodies and depending where they were they you know they walked over them and they uh, you know threw them in mass graves and and it didn't affect them that much until of course it it struck someone real dear to them and then and then and then there were different feelings that went with it and like we know a little bit what it's like when, <clears throat> when we think someone's been pounced on by a spiritual lion when, when it really strikes close to home, like someone you were really dear with, someone, someone who we'd, you know, communed with and preached with and fellowshiped with, and 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 all of a sudden it just seemed like they've been devoured by the roaring lion. And and how much how much more that hurts than just the fact that we go through Monet, Pierce City, or whatever town every day, and we we see people, just people and people and multitudes and multitudes of people that we think uh, are deceived, and we we're so used to it, I think. But I think I, I guess I tend to think that if if we really had a heart. For all men like God had, it should affect us like it does him. And I, you know, I think. It is his longing that all would come to the knowledge of truth. And anyway, those are just some of the, some of the thoughts I have about that. I want to, I mean, I would confess that I don't. I don't have that. I don't have the same. Fe I don't feel the same feelings when I see people that I'm pretty sure are lost as when I would see them get hit on the road or killed by a lion. But I, I wonder if I shouldn't. I think the fault lays on me. <laughs> I appreciate the opening too. Amen, brother Harvey. I appreciate the. Uh Lesson from Sirach. Uh, I'm looking at the lions from a different view. I'm doing a concordance in my mind of, I got about 20 times the word lion is used, but it's probably about 100 times. But um, it's a majestic animal, as if, you know, I've only seen a few in zoos, but it's a majestic animal. Uh, I know it's used with Isaiah, and maybe Amos. The, the lamb will lie down with the lion. It's from the physical thing, a lion. You ever see a lion tail in real, real life? Yeah. You know, I, I remember Nicholas Brown used to meet with us, said that the roar of a lion goes like a mile or more, and it, it makes the other animals kind of panic because they don't know what direction it came from, and so the, the lion can kind of prey up on it or something like that. And so, um, But I, I, I just make it clear. I, the lions, uh, Tertullian would say, I mean, they're, they're used good and bad. David and Daniel, you know, they feed it. And then um, in Samaria, right, when uh, the Syrians sent the Babylonians into, uh, to Israel, to Samaria, they were eaten up by lions. And so they got one prophet, and the prophet had to uh, uh, seek the Lord. And that's where we, they got the Samaritans, yeah, half, half, you know, what do you call it? Yeah, half true worship. They feared the Lord, but they served idols. There was that one prophet there. But um, the the one that uh, I think I thought of was that uh, um, my mind just went blank there. But the the, uh, the lion is um, Solomon had one, or uh, he had a, either a leopard or a lion in his court. That would be something. Pharaoh had one, but um, I, I just want to say it's used both positive and negative, and uh, I 
I think it says the king of beasts. There's a proverb that said, uh, a man says that there's a lion in the field. And, um, it was a good lesson on, on the lions. <laughs> Lot be magnified. 